Hey, how's it going guys? For today's video, we are going to go over how to draft the perfect 12-0 team, what spots to leave open, where to go with your draft picks, maybe which draft picks are the best. Before we move on with this video, I just want to say I know I haven't been uploading a whole lot to YouTube and been spending most of my free time on Twitch. That is going to change as we are going to now shift our focus from Twitch over to YouTube and be doing daily uploads on YouTube. So look forward to seeing content daily. So in this round, we got our choices between Duke Snyder, Brooks Robinson, and Joe Morgan. Like I said, they have speed all the merrier. But the card that I'm really looking at is Duke Snyder. He's got the power, he's got the contact, he's got the vision, he's got the fielding, and he's got the speed. Finding a bat that can field in the outfield is very important because when, as you get higher up, people will hit better, and therefore you're relying on your fielders to not make errors and also get good jumps. So Duke Snyder can easily do that. And in the infield, they typically don't get these kind of really bad animations as you can in the outfield. I'm sure most of you know this, but when it comes to the starting pitching in BR, you're not trying to fill it with diamonds or gold. You're looking to fill it with one bronze and four commons if that's the perfect world scenario, but typically doesn't end up that way. So if you get two bronzes and three commons in, you still have a very successful draft. In this round, I'm not seeing anybody who's really usable. Uh, or glitchy for the bronzes so i'm gonna go ahead and lean on david hess and he's just gonna eat that starting pitching spot in our gold round we actually get a really good pick here johnny venters is a really good card especially on all-star his control is a little bit better than say hall of famer legend but with all the other choices here nobody's really a good bat and having a good bullpen is something that is very important in br i recommend you have at least three preferably four go-to pitchers because when the innings are three to four innings long odds are at one point you're going to get into a jam and so you need to rely on another one so having four even five is preferred bullpen really does matter in br in our diamond round we actually this is a hard one if you want to be the person who stacks the bullpen you could go nen and then you have the choices between joe torrey or nolan arenado i feel like it's a lot harder to find a slugging third baseman that slugs as well as arenado at catcher, I'm going to hold down and see if we can get Gary Sanchez or in left field, we can get Joey Gallo. So for me, I'm definitely going Arenado and I feel like we're going to be able to be okay and get some other good bullpen pieces. In this round, we actually get an amazing pick. We have our choices between Madison Bumgarner, Daniel Murphy, John the Scope, and Jonathan VR. If you ever get to a round and you have the option to choose John the Scope, I highly recommend you do so. He's one of the most glitch cards in the game. It says he has 67 power versus right. He might as well play as if he has 90. And 85 versus left, he might as well play as if he has 100. He's really that good, and his fielding isn't going to break the bank. And worst case scenario, if I don't get a good shortstop like Paul DeYoung or go down that list, you can put John the Scope there. He's perfect. Our next round is a little bit iffy. If Zimmerman was up on inside edge today against righties, he would be the easy go-to. Definitely not a catcher I'm looking for. Archie Bradley is up on inside edge, and he's got a four-seam knuckle curve, two-seamer, and cutter. That cutter is a very valuable pitch as he can get himself out of jams with that and get people to roll over for the double play. So we're going to go Archie Bradley. Very next round, we get another really good opportunity to choose a card that is really good on All-Star for cheap, essentially, because he's in the silver round. So we have our choices between Jose Iglesias, Zanino, Cody Allen, and German Domingo. I'm going to go Zanino. As you can see, his stats right here, really good on All-Star. It plays off the charts. He's not Gary Sanchez good, but in terms of catchers, he's the next best. He, he really is. He's the next best and plays absolutely amazing. In this bronze round, we don't really get anybody that's really that great. Christian Stewart is usable, but he would take up that left field slot, which I'm looking to fill with Gallo since he's a left fielder, and we still have five silver rounds and then we also get craig gentry and scott kingery i'm gonna go ahead and choose big sexy like i said if you can at least get three commons into your starting rotation you still have a very successful draft our very next round we actually get a choice of our commons and i'm gonna go ahead and choose kyle wright and as you can see from our starting rotation as i did skip over it in the video we do have david heiss who is a bronze carson fulmer and chris volstad who are commons and bartolo Colon, who is this uh bronze as well so we're going to choose kyle wright and we will only have one more common slot and who knows maybe we get chris davis or somebody with really good speed that way we can go ahead and just shove them on the bench and they're at least useful for that bronze round again honestly if rowdy telez was up on inside edge i would probably go him i actually really like his card 
but he's not up on inside edge, so he's not going to play as well. Shane Robinson, no thank you. Uh, Drew Jackson, also no thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Fernando Rodney. He at least has decent pitches. I hope I never have to use him, but I'm just going to – I usually eat one to two bullpen spots and hope to have at least five or four go-to very usable relief pitchers. All right, we get ourselves kind of another tough scene. We get our choice between Mike Stanton – Jose Iglesias and Edwin Encarnacion. If Edwin was up on inside edge, this is not a hard choice at all. First base, great power. Even right now, he would still have 77 power versus right, and he has a good swing. And he really does play above his stats anyways. So I think I'm still going to choose Edwin. But again, if he was up on inside edge, this is not an issue at all. You already know who you're leaning on. Silver round after silver round, we get our choices of Brandon Crawford, Ben Attendee, and Sean Green. Uh, at least our pitcher here, four-seam curveball changeup. He's going to light up the radar gun a little bit. Very usable, honestly, and he's up on inside edge. I'm going to go ahead and choose him as he will at least see an inning or a couple batters. So in this round, we get our last common, and honestly, I'm not thrilled about any of these choices as I was hoping to get that common round when we're looking at our bench, but we at least have somebody who fits a criteria that we're looking for. Uh, there's Drew Robinson who can hit a little bit. Eric Gonzalez who's okay, and John Axford who is uh, washed. He's washed. We're gonna go ahead and go with Michael Hermosillo for a couple reasons. He has the speed, and I have an Angels bias. The dude at least has again that speed. He could field a little bit if I ever need a defensive replacement. And for whatever reason, he's up on inside edge, so we're just gonna take him. When we're talking about cars that are absolutely glitch, Alberto Mondesi is definitely somebody who fits that. We got Corey Dickerson, and he's down on inside edge. No, thank you. Marcus Simeon, uh, he wouldn't be a terrible pick. But again, Ad Adalberto Mondesi is stellar. It says he has 50 and 52 power. Um, It might as well read as at least 80. His swing is so good for this game. It's short and compact, and he always has really high exit velocities. Silver round again. I was really hoping we left open that left field spot for a reason, and unfortunately, we don't really get the pick we're looking for, but we do get to choose another really good bullpen piece. We got a choice between Jeffries, who, you know, if he wasn't down on the inside edge, definitely a potential pick. We get Alex Colomay, good pitches, cutter, four-seam changeup, and he's up on inside edge. Our next pick, Reyes Maranta. He's good as well, but the issue with him is he only has 47 control, and on All-Star, you want to be able to control your pitcher as much as possible. So for us, I'm, I'm definitely debating whether we go uh, Jeffress, even though he is down on inside edge, or we go with Colome. I think we're going to go with Colome just because he's going to have that boost to his hits in case per nine, and he does have a pitch that is valuable to me, and it's that cutter. All right, so this is actually a very good diamond round. You could go any way you want. If you feel like you want to gamble and see what which bullpen piece you could get next, you could go Cliff Floyd. But you have your choices between Bichette, who is a really good batter, but his fielding is definitely skeptical. And, he, and then you also have Raleigh Fingers, who has really good pitches. And again, I'm somebody who believes a bullpen really does matter in BR. And so with Venters, uh, Colome, Bradley, he would – he would secure our bullpen and he would be our go-to anytime we're in uh, the third inning or in deep trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Raleigh Fingers as we still have a gold and silver round potential for Joey Gallo. Our next round, we do have Trey Mancini, Alex Gordon, Chad Pinder, and Chris Martin. Honestly, for me, with Trey Mancini being up on inside edge, yes, his fielding is pretty bad, but his stick should make up for it. He's going to have over 90 power, 91 to be exact, against right, which is really good. And worst comes to worst, he's either a bench bat or he's actually in a starting lineup. For our bullpen, I'm going to go ahead and choose a lefty, even though there is better options on the board. I need somebody who can at least be a lefty specialist, so we're going to go ahead and choose Richard Blyer to just completely fix our bullpen. So when it comes to the last five rounds, which are the bench rounds, you're looking for cards that are either going to replace somebody in your starting lineup, or at worst, if they have really bad fielding, they're a good bench bat for when your pitcher comes up in the second or third inning. Uh, we get our choices between Alex Avila, Manuel Margo, Ketel Marte, and Leonis Martin. Martin today is going to have 69 power and uh, 72 contact. I think we're going to go with him, especially he's got that 69 power. Nice. 
um, he fits better than Alex Avila. So again, we're going to go Leonis Martin. So this is a tougher round than normal. Obviously, we're still going to go Paul DeYoung, but as you can see on our lineup screen, we already have a really good infield between Scope, Arenado, Mondesi, and Edwin Encarnacion. Worst comes to worst, I think we're going to replace Edwin Encarnacion with Paul DeYoung. Unfortunately, Paul DeYoung isn't up on inside edge today, but he's still an amazing bat nonetheless. In this round right here, we have two crazy good picks that you could go either way. You could go Ryan O'Hearn as a strict bench bat against righties, or you could go Fran Mil Reyes, who is in another amazing bat. And we might actually pick him up and replace a Michael Hermosillo just because, again, his bat is amazing and his fielding is at least close. He's not going to be great fielding. He's actually going to be pretty bad. But, again, his bat should make up for it. In our gold round, we actually get a really good pick, and not probably for the reason you think. Matt Olson, yeah, some of you are probably going, we're going to put him at first base, right? Wrong. He has a secondary of right field. So what's probably going to happen is Matt Olson is going to play right, and then we're going to have uh, Fran Mil Reyes play left over Trey Mancini, and Mancini is going to be the bench bat to face the righties, and everything is going to be good. So we're going to go ahead and choose Matt Olson, and he's also up on inside edge against lefties today. So he even has 77 power, and he's got a good swing, and he's a better fielder. It's a win-win. This last round, we get another great round for bronzes. I've actually never experienced so many good cards in the bronze rounds you could go ryan o'hearn who also has a good swing unfortunately he's not up an inside edge but matt joyce is also a glitched card it says he has 73 pop he plays as if he's closer to 90 same with o'hearn so 42 vision 56 55 you could go either way i'm personally gonna go ryan o'hearn just because i i'm a little bit more of a fan of his swing than i am of matt joyce's so right now i'm a little stuck when it comes to my team because like i said we still have a day on the bench and we did move matt olsen into right and fran mill reyes into left we our team absolutely rakes but i am looking for a way to get day young in i'm potentially thinking of moving arenado to first base and then moving day young to third that way you know you still at least have two really good bats and but again, at the end of the day, Edwin Encarnacion essentially still has more power than Paul DeYoung. So I think even though as much as I love Adalberto Mondesi, I'm going to go ahead and replace him with Paul DeYoung just simply because he's going to rake a little bit more, has that pop, and I think he's actually a little bit better of a fielder. That or they have the same stats. Relatively same stats. He has a little bit less of an arm, but better fielding. So we'll see if it makes up for one another. This is how our lineup's going to stack today. We got Duke Snyder leading off Arenado in the two hole, De Young third, Edwin Encarnacion fourth, Matt Olson to split up the lineup a little bit. He's going to be hitting fifth, Jonathan Scope sixth, Zanino, and then Reyes in the eight hole. For our bench, we do have Mondesi, Mancini, and O'Hearn. Again, O'Hearn's going to be the guy for the righties. Mancini can be the guy for the lefties, but he even may be better against righties because he is a plus 17. Worst comes to worst, so we do have Mondesi, who again is absolutely glitched. He could be our speed guy, and even Martin is at least usable. Our whole team is in a solid spot. And again, looking at our bullpen, we got our choices between Colome, Raleigh Fingers, Kayla, Archie Bradley, and Venters. Five really good and at least okay pitches to go to. We're going to go ahead and search for a match and for why you should be looking to use power players as opposed to contact or speed guys. So we do match up with somebody a little bit lower than I would have thought. It took a while to get a game for BR. So we're going to go ahead and click X. Let's see who our opponent's team is rocking. So we're playing J Nasty 165 He did also go the common pitcher out. Willie Mays, Matt Olson, Gary Sanchez, Ralph Kiner. He's got a good team. I know how I'm going to use our lefty. He's going to come up against either Olsen or Pedro as those are his only two dangerous lefties. Ken Griffey Sr. doesn't really bother me. Our opponent on the year has an okay record, 75-57, so he should be able to hit a little bit. Again, the reason why I'm leading off Duke is I want to be able to see him as much as possible. As we do lace one into the gap, hopefully it's fallen, and it is. It's down. So thankfully, the good news is Duke not only leads us off with a double, but he's also going to see at least one more at bat in the game. And that's what you want to see with your best card. One thing to make sure, because I'm also very bad at doing it, warm up your bullpen right away, especially if you're the way team. So looking at his lineup, I'm going to warm up Johnny Venters. 
and also we're gonna go ahead and warm up i'm gonna go with column a first to see how he reacts to the cutters so here's that bat with arenado for whatever reason our guy is leaving in his common pitcher didn't want to go to his bullpen you got to be kidding me in the making of this video already we're into a freeze off on br after we just got a hit and everything i don't know if our opponent was intentionally trying to do it he was pausing it and everything a lot so we're going to go ahead and see how long it takes him to quit. And then we're going to do another gameplay to show you why you should be going the power. All right. So our next game will be played against Bomb Squad. And the user's name is It's Common Sense. So he's got Gwen, Scope, Pujols, Locaine, Mazzarocco, De Young, Urshela. He's got his lineup in a weird way. I don't know why you would bat Locaine fourth. Mazzarocco should be either two or four in this lineup. I mean, even with De Young should be slotted up. I feel like our opponent doesn't know what he's doing. Our opponent is 17 and 5 and we're 142 and 28. Our opponent should at least be able to hit a little bit, so this game should be should be interesting. Before you throw the first pitch of the game, especially as a home team, make sure you warm up your bullpen. We're going to warm up Venters and we're also going to warm up Colome and eventually down the line we'll either go to Archie or Raleigh depending on where we are. So thankfully, our opponent's only using Tony Gwynn at the top of his lineup. As I say that, we give up a double right into the gap. Yikes. 2-2 two -two count to scope. We're going to see if we can get him to roll it over as he kind of gets jammed with it. But thankfully, our second baseman makes a good play. We're close to avoiding damage. 2-1 count. He's a little early on stuff, but I'm still going to give him the fastball, see how he reacts to it. Welcome to MLB 19. Late hits get rewarded a lot. I never know what to throw to people when they're late on pitches because if I throw something slower, then they'll have good timing. And if I continue to jam them up inside, they'll be late and get rewarded these hits. So it, it, it's something hard and something I don't know how to pitch to these people when they're constantly late. I just recommend trying to keep going back inside. We're going right back to the cutter as he was well out front last time as we get a ground ball up the middle. Our opponent gets two early runs right away off the not of greatest of hits. 0-2 the count. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get him to chase the fastball inside. And thankfully, even though we missed our spot, we get away with the pitch. That's strike three. So we are a little lucky here. We do get Duke Snyder versus a common righty. This is on All-Star. I do power swing quite often because the PCIs are huge. And I feel like even though it is All-Star and I typically don't agree with power swinging, um... I feel like it definitely does help. As you see right there, we get under a little bit, and we are able to crush it with Duke Snyder. That's one on the board. We should be able to get a couple home runs descending, especially depending on who he has in his bullpen. All right, so our opponent brings in Keone Kella. Um, good pitcher. Again, he's got that fastball curve changeup combo. We're going to go ahead and make sure we get something to hit. We do take one right down the middle, so let's make sure we get that again. As we get a curveball low and away, we square it up, lace it to the second baseman, unfortunately. It's just right to him. All right, 3 0 the count to Day Young. We're looking for something to drive. We get it. We're power swinging. That might be gone. That might not. It's off the wall. All right. We're going to go ahead and send him three. I don't think his outfielder's got a good arm. 67 speed should make it. We're in there safe. So he's going to go ahead and walk Edwin. I honestly don't blame him. As that does bring up Olsen, I would be surprised if he doesn't go to his bullpen. All right, he's sticking with it. Again, we got to remember, he's got the fastball curve up changeup. As we get something to hit, I think we just missed it, but that's easily going to get the run in. It's actually gone. Holy shit. All right, I think I missed that by quite a bit. We did miss it by a little bit, but we got away with it. Get another pitch to hit. Absolutely smoke it to the shortstop again. That's two outs. Get a hanging fastball. So as you can see, we put up five runs in the first. And again, when you choose the lineups with all power, you get this opportunity to absolutely demolish the ball. As we get another pitch to hit, it is now six runs in the first inning. All-star and power bats go together amazing. We're going to go ahead and choose Trey Linguini as he does have 91 pop versus right today and hopefully he doesn't bring in a lefty if he does we're gonna go ahead and probably go Mondesi or somebody so he's sticking with it like i was hoping come on give me something to hit we get something to hit trey linguini with another bomb was at four or five in the first inning like i said power is definitely the metal on all-star i'm surprised he hasn't brought in a lefty to face olsen or snyder as we get another pitch to hit, we lace it. Thankfully, it's not a line out, so we're going to continue this rally as we've already gone through our lineup once in the first inning. 
Ah! All three of our outs are absolutely laced to the fielders, but again, we still put up seven. We got through the lineup one time in the first inning. It's gone perfect. I forgot to warm up a righty, so we're going to go ahead and just bring in Kella now. Definitely not loose. But again, let's make sure we warm up somebody. We'll warm up Archie Bradley. That way, if we do get in trouble with Kella, we're okay. Kella's got relatively good control, which is surprising to me. Because I thought he didn't. But I, I'm controlling him fairly well right now. 0-2 count. Should have been smarter on my end. Shouldn't have been hanging something or even trying to put in the zone. Our, my opponent's shown me that he will be a little over-aggressive. So we got to take advantage of that. Let's see well-placed changeup. It's actually, honestly, well struck as we can't get there. Reyes is fielding. Like I said, it could come back to bite us. Opponent brings in Lane Adams off the bench. I'm going to go and throw a fastball and see how he reacts to it. Reacts well to it. Thankfully, he lines out a little bit as well. Obviously, it wasn't a pure line out, but he hits it hard, and we get an out. 0-2, the count to Gwen. We're going to learn from our mistake. We're going to make sure it's out of the zone. Actually ends up hanging a little bit, but it does freeze him. It ends up being a well-placed curveball for strike three. I'm going to go with the curveball again. Low in the zone. Strike three. He only scores one. We avoid any more damage. Let's continue the offensive production. First pitch to Day Young is absolutely smoked again. Unfortunately, it is a line out. Line outs will definitely happen with the power bats, but typically, again, on all-star, you don't have to worry about it a whole lot. Here's Edwin smokes it almost for another lineup but we do get on base nine speed obviously he's not a steel threat way too slow all right so we get matt olsen up again let's hit another bomb all right not a bomb but it is a line drive for a hit station to station move him over first and second for who first and second for scope here we go the old one to scope the dude's got a really slow change up as we get one to drive and unfortunately we drive it again to another outfielder. feel like he's going to flow something to Zanino. I feel it. We get something to hit, and I absolutely choked that. I was honestly expecting a little bit of Osfi, but either way, I missed that. We're going to go ahead and bring in Raleigh Fingers now just to shut the game down, put it away. Raleigh Fingers has that good effective sinker, slider, and fork ball combo, and he's a little funky, so that's what makes him really good. One over the count. We're going to go ahead and see if we could get him with this sinker in. We jammed him. Thankfully, it's weekly hit to Encarnacion. That's one down. It's slider away. Weekly hit. Raleigh Fingers, Mr. Athletic out there. We're good. That's two down. I'm going to throw the four seam away as uh, we're dealing with a button dance. As thankfully, we only got to deal with it for one batter. That's a weak pop out to our superb right fielder, Matt Olson. That's game over. Again, the first inning, we did a lot of damage. We scored seven. In the second inning, we lined out twice, which was unfortunate, but at least we scored seven, and it protected us throughout the rest of the game. If you enjoyed today's content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. As I said earlier in the video, I will be putting YouTube in front of Twitch, so therefore, I'll be posting every day to YouTube, and if I have free time, catch me on my Twitch channel. The link to my Twitch channel will be in the description down below. Go ahead and check it out. As I said, I will at least stream on there three to four times a week, hopefully, but YouTube will be now coming first. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a good day.